There we go. Looks like we have some people starting to join, so I'll get started here. Uh, definitely wanted to have a, a more organized discussion tonight than I had last night. Um, hi, Marty. Hope you're doing well. So at the bottom here, I've created a little scroll, a little screen crawl um, that hopefully you can see. Hopefully it's not too jumpy. It might be a little jumpy, but hopefully uh, you can see. And I just kind of outlined a couple of cities that is... Um, uh, Hi, Amy. Uh, outlined a couple of cities to I have to sneeze. Hold on, excuse me. Maybe not. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. I've created a scrolling, um, a, a crawl on the bottom of the screen here that has impacts for uh, particular cities, and that are kind of just general scenarios. Don't take it as an exact forecast, but a lot of people last night were asking for specific impacts for their cities or their regions and i just kind of thank you amy i appreciate that um you know specific impacts for their cities or their regions and asking what's likely to be at their location and you know this is an evolving situation and you know so i put on the bottom here a crawl that kind of has some impacts for the cities it looks like it is showing up pretty well on the stream hopefully it's not too jumpy but i kind of outlined the rainfall threat the wind threat the uh, st uh, storm surge threat for the coastal cities and just kind of a general idea so if you have any more questions like that uh just ask but you should be able to see your, your region down there i've added a couple of, of cities if you have any questions throughout the broadcast i plan to stay on for about 45 minutes or so and discuss this um, until about 11 30 or 11 15 sometime around there uh, if you have any questions just feel free to comment and i will get to them as soon as i can hi tanya could you please talk about Richmond, Virginia? Not many people talk about Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, so, you know, Richmond has been excluded from the cone of uncertainty, uh, which is, you know, what we call the official National Hurricane Center track, and, you know, Richmond being up here, it really looks like it's going to be south of that area. So um, that's that's why it's not being talked about a whole lot. Um, I can't really, I guess I could zoom in here, but the, the, the you know, the particulars of the forecast won't really affect, and you're well enough inland that you'll, you'll get some gusty winds, you'll get some, you know, rain showers from this, but you really won't have any kind of storms, or you'll, you'll have a little bit of swelling of, of the ocean, but you're not going to have any direct impacts from this. Um, with, with the latest data that's coming in, it really looks like Florence is going to kind of uh, speed up and then slam on the brakes right when it gets to the coast and might drift a little more inland as you know shown by this this track here so anywhere south of you know anywhere south of cape hatteras i'm not going to say is safe but the impacts really look to have been diminished from anywhere on the northern part of the outer banks and south so um, coastal virginia some storm surge is certainly possible down and you know the tide not the tide water but the hampton roads region uh, probably gets some gusty winds but really not a ton of impacts in that area so um, that, that's probably why it's not been talked about a whole lot, just because the main impacts will be confined to uh, south of Cape Hatteras down here into, you know, Moorhead City, uh, Jacksonville, Camp Lejeune area, Wilmington, and down to Myrtle Beach, which are currently under the hurricane warning. So where you see the red here is the hurricane warning, and that's where the, the greatest impact is. Hi, Tim. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, hello, Amy, and hello... Looks like that's all that that has said hello. But hello to everyone. If you're just now joining, it looks like about 13 people are watching. Uh, just kind of going to have a, a free discussion again like I did last night, but a lot more organized tonight. I have a little screen crawl at the bottom there showing some basic scenarios for some cities. So hopefully I address your, your city or region in that area. And if not, uh, feel free to ask in the comments and I will get to it. Um, that's just Those are general scenarios. It's not an official forecast, just kind of something you can expect. Um, for your area and if you have any questions just post them i have a uh, plan to stand for about the 45 minutes or so and just go through i have a bunch of resources up here you can see all the tabs open in my um, window and just going to kind of go through and just talk about the general uh, about a forecast so hey elizabeth hope you're doing well uh, what about high point north carolina so on the bottom of the screen here i created the crawl and it's actually coming up right now um if you see triad area 20 to 40 mile per hour sustained winds gust to 50 miles per hour uh, two to six mile per hour rain likely with locally higher amounts um so to anyone asking about the triad area that's scrolling and it will it'll repeat every couple of um couple of minutes and it'll go through so um i'll get to those questions at the end but i'm going to kind of go through my um kind of a, a little structure i have here and for any like specific questions check out the bottom of the scrolling screen and you can um see general general synopsis of what you can expect there 
Uh, hi, Marty. What do you make of the shift further south in the latest spaghetti model? So it's a great question. You may notice that the cone overall, um, you know, earlier it was you get blue out so it doesn't contrast with the red. You know, the track was a little more this way and was going up into like southern Virginia. And it's kind of had a tick to the southwest, mainly because the the um, the ridge, the models are picking up on a stronger ridge out here, and it's kind of hard to show on this map because it cuts off the Midwest. But the, the reason that Florence is is stopping is a huge, you know, area of high pressure up here, and and low you know, hurricanes are low pressure systems. Imagine it like you're you're making tea, you know, you're, you're spinning, or not you're spinning, you're making a jug of tea. You take the spoon, you're mixing up the sugar. The faster you spin that jug of tea, what happens to to the water level of the tea? You know, it, it's not water, it's, it's tea. So if you're making tea, if you're spinning it faster and mixing up the sugar, the faster you spin in the jug, the water level goes down in the middle, right? So you're making a vortex. So the faster you go, the deeper the center goes. That's exactly what's happening in a hurricane. The pressure is dropping. You always hear, you know, when the pressure drops, the storm is getting stronger. Well, that's simply an effect of you have to, it's a conservation of momentum. The faster the storm is spinning, the deeper the pressure has to be in order for it to, to maintain something we call, you know, hydrostatic balance in the atmosphere. It's a little more complex, but just imagine, you know, your, your jug of tea. If you're spinning the jug of tea faster, you're mixing up your tea really, really fast, the center of it's going to go down. You're going to have a little tornado that you made inside of, of the jug. That's exactly what's happening. So it's a low pressure system. So it can't penetrate. It can't go through a high pressure system. So it's building this big ridge up in here, and all this is is stuff that Florence cannot penetrate through. It cannot go through that. So it runs in and kind of slows down and curves off, and the models have been making that ridge stronger and stronger, which means that the effects it affects Florence earlier. So that's what uh, was causing more of that southward shift. Some of the models don't even have it actually making a, a, a landfall and just have it sitting off of the coast spinning for, for a couple of days. So you see you know, each one of these dots are 24 hours apart. So... Um, you know, excluding Wednesday down here or the, the AM dot here. This is 2 p.m. Thursday. 24 hours later, it's only gone that far. 24 hours after this point, it's only gotten to that point. So, you know, what to prepare for? It's it's going to be a long duration event. It's going to be like a thunderstorm with damaging winds without a lot of lightning. There's not a ton of lightning in landfalling tropical systems because most of the the energy and momentum is focused on the wind. But it's you know it's going to be a long. It's just imagine it's going to be a long severe thunderstorm with very heavy winds and rain, and it's just not going to stop. It's going to just be spinning here. And even if it doesn't make a direct landfall, even if the current model projections kind of hold in it, it doesn't come very far inland. You know, areas like Raleigh, areas like the Triad and Charlotte are still going to get hours and hours and hours of gusty winds. And that's that's the main concern here. We're just not used. Our infrastructure is not prepared to, you know, endure hours and hours of, you know, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 60 miles per hour possible. So that's that's kind of the situation here. It's going to be an, an extraordinary event regardless because it's something we're not used to, just having rain and wind for several hours. So, um, you know, what I make of that southward track is I think that's going to kind of continue. I think it'll kind of end up somewhere in here. I think the, the, the hurricane warnings kind of depict anywhere that the hurricane center is confident that will make, you know, a landfall. I think this area up here um, in the, this, you know, the central outer banks, the Albemarle, Pamlico Peninsula right here where we have – um, you know, uh, Plymouth, and we have uh, the Alligator River right here, and Manteo. I think that area is more, you know, it's not safe is what I want to say, but it's it's more in a place to where it's not going to probably have direct impacts like down here in Wilmington. I'm, I'm pretty concerned about Wilmington just because it seems to be in that sweet spot where it's going to receive storm surge no matter where the storm really goes. So um, that's that's something I'm a little worried about, but I think that southward trend will kind of continue. I think the storm will end up I think it's still going to make a North Carolina landfall. I just don't think it's going to be, um, you know, it, it might have a little tick. But the thing to focus on, it's going to be a huge storm. It's already about 500 miles across, about 450 miles across. So it's going to have wide-ranging impacts that, um, you know, you, you fall. It, it's going to reach all parts of the state. It's going to be a statewide event. And even into the up, upstate of South Carolina and the, the Midlands of South Carolina, you're still going to get – you know, several hours of rain and wind, which is something we're just not used to. So it's going to be an adjustment to, you know, be ready for that. It looks like we have, you know, just about over 20 people watching. So welcome to anyone who just joined in. I'm going to be streaming until about 1130 or so. 
and uh, just talk about some general things for Florence. I have a bunch of tabs open with some resources we'll kind of go through. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask them in the comments. And I have a little screen crawl at the bottom here that has some highlights for certain areas. So hopefully you can um, uh, you can catch those if they go by. It'll keep repeating throughout the entire the entire live stream. So you can catch, um, you know, I have some basic wind outlook and a basic rain outlook and, you know, what's the most likely and, and stuff about power outages. So a look down there for any information about your region. But if you have any more specific questions, uh, feel free to ask and otherwise i will start going through my cycle here of things to show everyone so it looks like um jeff how many inches rain in greensboro so again if, if anyone has any questions about the um the specific cities i'll get to those a little bit later in more detail but for now just look at that screen crawl at the bottom uh, for jacksonville north carolina the same thing uh, you're welcome elizabeth hi david hope you're doing well hi haven if it stalls in ash north carolina be in the prolonged if it stalls, will Ash, North Carolina, be in the prolonged hurricane force of tropical storm force winds? Th that is the concern. Um, I, I'm not going to pull up a model run on this broadcast because I don't really think it, you know, showing one model run, you, you get new model data every six hours with the American American model. It's not, um, it's not really going to be the best idea to show that. So if it does stall, you're going to be subject to a, a long period. So the main thing I want to show to answer that question is look at how long it takes for the storm to go 24 hours from this point to this point. So each of these dots, and by the way, the M stands for major hurricane, the S stands for storm. It, it takes 24 hours to go from this spot to this spot. That's 24 hours. That, that's a long time that, you know, for that storm to be sitting there. So um, you, you know, it is going to be in that prolonged area. Brunswick County, uh, if, if I go over to my county map here, you know, these these counties down here are likely to be in the prolonged, uh, you know, the prolonged time of having had the biggest risk of that prolonged, you know, sustained force winds of, you know, 50, 60 miles per hour with gust over hurricane force. So, you know, one thing to remember when it says that the winds of the storm are 140 miles per hour, that doesn't mean that you're actually going to get 140 mile per hour winds. That's likely going to be th the highest possible gust. So if it's if it's making landfall as a category four hurricane with 140 mile per hour sustained winds, you're probably going to see gusts you know upwards of 100, maybe 110. But you're not. It's not going to slam on the coast with 140 mile per hour winds. It's not going to be that severe. Gusts are certainly possible that high, but you're not going to have 140, 150 mile per hour winds, you know, blowing on the side of your house for several hours. That's that's just you know not it's unphysical. It's not really the thing that that number is to show you that's the maximum sustained winds that have been measured in the storm. So keep that in mind. So, you know, those areas, you know, Robinson County, Bladen County, Pinder County, Brunswick County, New Hanover County, Columbus County, and um, down here into Myrtle Beach, you know, Horry County down here and right along the, the North Carolina, South Carolina border, I think will be in that area where you just have, you're subjected to winds for a long period of time. And that's when you can have structural damage. When I say structural damage, I mean, you know, shingles being blown off, or si if you have siding on your house, siding peeling back, maybe some you know, trees falling down. I am concerned about the trees. There are just so many trees in North Carolina. They're not used to having you know, being blown from from the east side. I am concerned about you know losing a lot of trees in the storm. But uh, I think Ash, North Carolina, which is right, I believe Ash is right in this area, is going to be in that area with prolonged hurricane force winds, and that's that's just the way that it is with this storm. Um, so I think that is going to be a problem. And I hope that uh, you don't have any large trees surrounding your house because that would certainly be my biggest concern would be be the um, the trees falling around there. Um, David, will advisory be released for the triad in the next 24 hours? That's a great question. I actually have all the advisories pulled up here and wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to take this hurricane track off because it's kind of in the way. I, I guess I'll leave it up for now. So this is the uh, National Weather Service Enhanced Data Display. It's a great website if you are pretty in tune to weather data. It has a lot of stuff on here to look at. And while this um, while this buffers, I wonder if I can take this. Let's see. I'm trying to make the map a little less cluttered so we can understand what it's trying to show us here. Here we go. So I'm going to zoom in here. And uh, to David's question, these are the current advisories and watches. I never thought that living in Johnston County here, I would ever be under a tropical storm watch. But this year, this season, uh, the, the NOAA National Weather Service has allowed for inland offices. So. It, offices, National Weather Service offices that are not on the coast, they have been allowed to issue tropical products inland to communicate the, the impacts better because usually it would have been a high wind warning or something. And it can get confusing and get really cluttered on the map when you have a bunch of different things. So 
uh, Nash County, Wilson County, Johnston County, Harnett County, Cumberland County, Hope County, and Scotland County all under a tropical storm watch, which means tropical storm conditions are expected within the uh, within the next 48 hours. And it looks like I just lost that layer here. You notice it says experimental here, so it, it's subject to to do some um, some funky things sometimes. So I wonder if I can get that back. Maybe, maybe not. I might have to come back to this. But to answer your question, David, I don't really see them expanding the the watches and advisories. Here it comes back in this area. I think you know they might include Wake County. You know, in this area, they might include Nash County and like up along the I ninety five corridor. But I don't think they'll issue anything, just because you know when when it's a tropical storm watch means that tropical storm conditions are expected. So that's sustained winds of thirty nine to seventy four miles per hour. Seventy four being the, the extreme of that. But I don't think that they would extend this anymore. They might um, extend more into upper upstate of South Carolina, down near, ironically, the town of Florence, and um, maybe into Columbia if the current track kind of persists and it goes in. But I don't think they'll extend that anymore. But that doesn't mean you should prepare any less. Just because you're under an advisory doesn't mean that, you know, you're expected to be much worse. You know, th that doesn't mean the tropical storm conditions are going to stop on this line. You know, they're going to ex ex extend outside of that. This fuchsia pink color is the hurricane watch, and then the red is the hurricane warning. So all of these counties inland are actually under a hurricane warning. So anywhere up from, I think about Duck up here down to, I lost it, my ability to scroll on this map too, uh, down to Myrtle Beach is under a hurricane warning. And you notice if I hover over it, give this information box, you know, that's one and a half million people under a hurricane warning on the Carolina coast. So huge impact of this storm. You know, no matter what, if you're a North Carolinian, you can expect high impact weather from Thursday to at least Sunday. That's the key point of this live stream that I want to get across, whether it's prolonged periods of rain, prolonged periods of wind. If you live in North Carolina, you're, you can expect high impact weather, meaning weather that inconveniences you from Thursday to Sunday at the least. Um, power are probably going to go out. You're probably going to have some trees that fall down. Um, this is just this is an extraordinary event for this area. This is not something that comes very often. We have to prepare for it. And the weather's going to do what the weather's going to do. And we have to accept that and prepare for it. And if you're prepared, there's no reason to be worried or be scared. You know, if you're prepared, hunker down, be safe, be smart. You should have nothing to worry about. So th those are the counties under a hurricane warning. And this pink fuchsia color has an additional 1.1 million people. And then this tropical storm watch, which I'm actually in, has just south of, you know, 900,000 people. So, you know, about 3 million people or so just in this area under under advisories. Then you have a storm surge warning on the entire coast here. And then you have a um, flood warning, uh, excuse me, a coastal flood advisory for, for the entire coastline here. If I took this off, I could show you that. But that's the current state of the advisory. So I'm going to move on to another question, but I don't think they'll be extended any more farther inland. I do expect this area to maybe be filled in if the current track um verifies and and more you know it takes a more inland approach which is actually the worst case scenario for central north carolina because you have all the water being pushed in the ocean up this way into you know upstream the rivers you have water coming up here you have it getting into every little inlet you're going to have water up here on the southern part of the the Alba, albemarle pamlico peninsula you have water coming up in newburn you have water coming up into wilmington and then you have all the water that's going to fall over central north carolina the water has to go somewhere and it's going to go down slope. It's going to go down the gradient and it's going to come down. So you're going to have this meeting of the water and it's going to cause flooding issues, which is exactly what we saw with Hurricane Matthew likely to happen again, which is, it's unfortunate. It's not good to hear, but it's just, the water has to go somewhere and it, it usually ends up outside of the riverbanks. So moving on to another question uh, for anyone who's just joining, I have a screen crawl at the bottom here. That's showing some generalized impacts for some areas. Feel free to, um, to look at that and um, see if your area is listed. And if not, you can ask questions here. I plan to stream till about 1130, so about another 35 more minutes just talking about Florence, general discussion. I have a bunch of resources open that I'll share. And um, yeah, just post questions if you have any. So um, hi, Mandy, hope you're doing well. Any idea when the heavy rains and winds will end for the Raleigh-Durham area? You guys are awesome because you're pretty much outlining my entire presentation here. So I'm going to go to that tool. So I'm on the National Hurricane Center website. Very easy to get to. It's just nhc.noaa.gov. And uh, this is a, it's an important point that I wanted to hammer home in this, this video. So um, most likely, here's the key graphic that you'll probably want to take away from this, this live stream. This is the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. 
we can kind of assume that this is also going to be the most likely arrival time of the rain because the tropical storm force winds are usually in those rain bands that come on shore before the actual eye of the storm does. So treat this map. It doesn't say anything about rain, but for simplicity purposes, just assume that this is tropical storm force winds and rain. So to answer your question, Mandy, uh, Thursday 8 a.m. is when it's probably going to be approaching, you know, the coast by 8 p.m. I may have said p.m. there, 8 a.m., and then by 8 p.m. into central North Carolina, into Charlotte, and up into southern Virginia by Friday 8 a.m., and then uh, Friday 8 p.m. by then. So what what I've kept, what I've heard told to me, and what's been reiterated to me and what I want to reiterate to you, have all of your preparations done by supper time tomorrow, by nightfall tomorrow, and be ready to wake up on Thursday to tropical storm force winds. And that you know, that's anywhere from 39 to 74 miles per hour. If on the onset of the winds, you're not going to be seeing 74 miles per hour. I doubt that anywhere west of Raleigh is going to see a wind gust in excess of maybe 50, 55, possibly, excuse me, possibly 60 miles per hour. Um, I just don't think that it's going to have enough gusto to, to kind of get up into that area and have wind problems that bad. But uh, Thursday morning into Thursday evening. Thursday is going to be the day that it, um, you know, the the onset actually of the storm comes. So that's you've seen a lot of schools closing and stuff on Thursday, and that's why because beginning Thursday morning, the, the most likely arrival time would be on the coast, and at that point, it would just keep spreading north and west by then. So by Thursday night, Central North Carolina, and by Friday, everyone in Central North Carolina is going to be having the effects of that. So. I would uh, plan by, by the time you wake up just to be safe in case the storm accelerates a little bit or in case it continues to grow in size, which I'll also talk about that in a minute. It's it's actually growing in size right now, which is good and bad, and we'll talk about why. Uh, but I would expect that the rain and the wind is most likely going to start Thursday. And specifically, your question, the heavy rains is probably going to be on Friday. I would say Friday morning. So Thursday Thursday afternoon to Friday afternoon is probably going to be the worst weather for Central North Carolina. For the coast, it's going to be Thursday morning to Friday morning. For Central North Carolina, it's going to be Thursday noon to Friday noon. It's going to be the worst worst of the weather. And the rain, it's going to come down. It's going to be hard to drive. And don't try to drive in this. Your car acts like a big sail. And if you get a wind gust, it's very hard to drive. There could be trees in the road. It's just going to be a mess. So just stay home, hunker down. And uh, just, you know, stay, stay safe with that aspect of it. Uh, you're welcome, Tina. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Kathy, are we looking at two to three days of constant rain or will we have a few breaks in the rain? That's an excellent question. Um, I can't see the rest of your comment for some reason. It's not letting me, but I, I'm going to assume that's the end of your question there. Uh, th that's a great question. That's something we don't really know until the storm comes on shore. So I'm going to jump over to some satellite imagery. So just to show you, um, you know, if I can get my thing back up here. You know, we're we're not making this up. It, it's coming. It's um, you can clearly see in the satellite loop that the storm is, is making a beeline for North Carolina. And here is Florence right now. It's a Category Four hurricane. Looks like the new update just came out. So that is um, we'll, we'll review that in a minute. But here is the storm. Um, it is is coming this way. It's about 750 miles from Cape Fear down here in Wilmington, and it's about 500 miles across right now. About 450 to 500 miles across. And it's working its way this way, and it's coming. I mean, you can see in this satellite image, it's it's imminent. And as soon as these clouds start to come over, you can kind of assume that's going to be the start of of the wind. Um, so, uh, to answer your question, we don't really we don't have any radar except on the, the Hurricane Hunter aircraft that can see inside, and that data is usually not publicly available because it's it's not the highest resolution um, of radar. So. Well, we have radars in North Carolina. We have radars in Clayton. I actually live right off the cone of silence in that radar. I live very near the Clayton radar. We have a radar down here in um, the Wilmington radar. It's a little offset from Wilmington, but it's in that area. And we have a radar in Moorhead City, which I'm not exactly sure the place of the radar, but it's in that area. So these radars will start to pick up uh, the the actual range of the radars. Usually about 250 miles, we'll start to see the outer rain band. So probably about this time tomorrow night into early Friday morning, or excuse me, into early Thursday morning, we'll start to see the outer bands of rain. And usually when you have a tropical system, what makes it so different is that it is constant rain. There is no breaks. Um, but sometimes when the storm interacts with land, to answer your question, Kathy, sometimes when the storm interacts with the land, the, the rain bands can kind of get kind of broken up and it can get messy and you have breaks in the rain and you just have lots of tropical downpours 
like, you know, you'll have an hour of rain and you have a 30 minute break and then, you know, two hours of rain and then you'll have an hour of dry and just kind of scattered. But for anywhere, I would say in, you know, this range, something like this is going to see that constant rain. It's especially in the, on the onset. And, you know, with, with Matthew, I was, I had rain for, I think about, you know, 14 hours or something. It just nonstop because I was in that zone. But when you get out to here, you might have some more fragmented rain bands where you have some breaks in the rain. I would not advise going and trying to do stuff in those breaks because the tropical showers can fill back in quickly and they can, you know, make a, um, the, the, it's still not advised to do any kind of travel or try to get out and do anything, have all your preparations done beforehand. But I, it is going to be that kind of solid wall of rain that comes on. And that's something that will become more clear when we have that radar image. I'm going to be following the storm like a hawk as long as I have power. So I will update and try to um, show as many radar images. Radar imagery is actually the best way to track the storm because it's giving you a true estimation of what exactly is happening with a satellite. We're hundreds of miles above the Earth's surface, and there's actually little tiny discrepancies in where exactly the storm is. So you actually verify the storm's landfall by radar as well because radar is giving you a true estimate of what's happening on the ground, whereas satellite can have tiny, tiny differences in, um, in kind of the angle that the satellite is, is pointing down at the Earth. So the radar is going to be our best bet for that, but we'll have a better idea of that and what exactly kind of rain mode we're looking at um, when Florence comes ashore. But I would plan for constant rain, constant rain, just, you know, maybe a couple of breaks of lighter rain in between, but just be prepared to be inside for long periods of time because the rain will probably be constant. The farther away you get from the coast, the more fragmented it will be. Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Kathy. If you have any more, feel free to ask. Hi, Kenny. Hi, Zoe. Uh, absolutely, David. Uh, Luke, Landon, Megan, nice to see you all. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, David, with landfall potential risk for tornadic spinoff in my area as well. That's another great question I was going to address as well with, with the tornado. Uh, someone, I think it was actually Kathy who just asked that question. She asked a great question on my post the other day. And I want to get a good map so I can explain this the best. I guess we will, I guess we'll go with our county map here. This is just simply a county map uh, overlaid on Google Maps. And I want to talk about the tornado risk with tropical cyclones because that's something that's really often overlooked. Yes, you can have tornadoes within a cyclone. No, they're not usually intense tornadoes. They're very quick spin-ups. And I'll show you what happens here with uh, with the, the friction. So what happens is the wind is coming and it's smoothly gliding along the, the ocean surface. And I've gone at a bit of an angle here. It comes, and this is not a forecast. I'm not pointing at any particular city. This is a hypothetical example. So it's coming inland and it's smooth. It doesn't have any friction over the water. And what happens is it hits land and it kind of, you know, it has some friction. It has some, it's not able to smoothly glide. It has trees, it has buildings to go over, and it hits some rougher things. So what happens if you're driving on the interstate, and let's pretend the interstate's completely empty so you don't get hurt. If you are flying down the interstate going, you know, 80 miles an hour, and then you slam on brakes, what happens? Well, your car fishtails and it, your brakes lock up and you go in either one direction. You're introducing friction into the system. And what happens is you start to fishtail and kind of slide around. And if you if you brake hard enough and, and brake in the right way, the back of your car kind of swings around and, and you kind of do this rotation. That's exactly what happens when hurricanes make landfall. The wind is gli smooth and glide. Excuse me. The wind is glidely. I cannot speak. The wind is gliding smoothly across the ocean surface. And when it hits land, it encounters friction. And that friction can be so great sometimes that it can actually cause that air parcel to fishtail, like I just said, imagine your car example, and can kind of create little spins and, you know, do weird things. And that's where you get your tornadic potential. So what I expect to see with, with Florence making landfall is, you know, you'll have a lot of quick spin up tornado warnings, and that's where a lot of the wind damage actually comes from. And that's, that's something to keep in mind. It's very uncommon that you're going to actually see a, a tornado on the ground. These will be kind of, you know, clear funnels and they'll just be really quick. They'll be very weak because, you know, the atmosphere is being dominated by the hurricane, the momentum transfer to the ground of the wind, but there is a possibility for quick little spin-ups. Hurricane Ivan back in, in 2004 actually produced the, was one of the most prolific tornado producers because it went over land so many different times in so many different directions that, you know, it produced a lot of spin-ups. So if, if there are tornado warnings that pop up and you hear that, just remember that car example, they're happening because here's the car on the interstate flying the air parcels uh, gl uh, gliding over the ocean, then it hits land, and all of a sudden, 
it encounters friction and starts to spin. The car is fishtailing around and you can't get control. And that's, you know, causing those little spins. And these are not actual locations that tornadoes will be. This is just a hypothetical example of the hurricane. And, and with Florence coming in at that angle, it's more likely to produce more, you know, tornadoes just because it's coming directly on land instead of just skirting by. There's a potential for quick little spin ups, especially on the flat terrain out here in Pamlico and Beaufort County. So I hope that um, explained the question. I would I would give it a moderate risk. I'm going to actually show the, another page that summarizes that information as well about the tornado risk. Hi, Shannon. What are your thoughts in regards to impacts in the Unifor area? That is an area I'm not familiar with. So let's check that out. Or, oh, okay. Hickory, Lenore, Morganton. Met. I did not know that was called the Unifor. I learned something new today. That is great. Okay. So the, the Unifor area for that area... You know that that's kind of the hardest question right now. That's actually um nothing about the the hurricane is as complicated as determining the impacts inland. So I'm going to go over to the hurricane track if I can figure out where I'm going here and, and settle on one page. And okay, so I was I plan to do this. Excuse me, I plan to do this live stream uh, during the 11 p.m. update to say it. And to Marty, if you're still watching, and anyone else, they have adjusted the track south southward. So uh, you know last update it was kind of like this and they have taken it a tick down to where it's making this weird motion where it kind of settles off here and goes off this way so as of the 11 p.m update so fresh off of the press it actually has been adjusted down so great idea for pointing that out and um it, that has adjusted so that's the trend we have to watch um so okay this actually plays right into your question i'm um, shannon for for the unifor area over here you know in this area the storm is expected to now drift kind of inland. It's going to meet this big ridge. It can't penetrate through that. It can't go any farther. So it's going to kind of stall out and just kind of slide over to the west. So, you know, that's really dependent. You know, you see that the H here means hurricane, M means major hurricane, storm, and depression. So even when you have a tropical depression, all of this storm, this storm is wound up right now. All that momentum has to wind down. So it takes a long time for it to really die out and weaken. So I would expect gusty winds in that area. Um, I would expect, you know, a good, good amount of rain. The, the, the rain potential is becoming really murky with this track. It's going to have plenty of, of, you know, moisture to pull off of the ocean, but how far inland that rain is going to get is going to be uh, kind of difficult to determine. So in the Unifor area, there's not any, you know, uh, there's not a really good moisture source that's going to be able to pull it in, but it still should have enough to work with that to where, and especially depending on the size of the storm, there could still be a lot of rain inland. So, for your area specifically, I would, you know, plan for, you know, uh, 20 to 40 mile per hour winds with gusts to 50 possible. Um, and I would plan for, you know, anywhere from at least, you know, two inches of rain, maybe up to, to three or four, possibly six with locally higher amounts, especially if this thing does linger inland. We're going to have major flooding problems in this area, which is, is not currently being modeled you know more models are going to run overnight we'll have another idea tomorrow it seems like it's a never changing situation because it is it's an evolving system so we have to keep an eye on that but you know just prepare for a lot of rain a lot of wind it's an extraordinary event it's going to be something you know it, it's a lot it's like a thunderstorm without I, I keep going back to that because it's the only thing i can think of that that's a real life example for you to relate to it's going to be like having a severe thunderstorm over your house without a lot of lightning for 24 hours it, it, that's exactly what it's going to be. So, you know, trees are going to get weak. Trees are likely going to fall. Um, you know, it, it's just like having a severe thunderstorm over your house for an extended period of time without a lot of the, the thunder and lightning. And instead, that noise is going to be replaced with the wind, you know, vibrating against your house. It's going to sound spooky. It's going to sound eerie because your house is not used to hearing wind that strong for that long. So um, thank you for introducing me to the Unifor area. I will keep that in mind when doing post because I did not know that that region was actually referred to that. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, Tina, worried about the tornadoes. I wouldn't be too worried. It's definitely possible, but, you know, it's really rare. You know, tornadoes are, are tiny on the scale of the hurricane. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. A quick spin up as possible, but that's the least of your concerns. I would worry about, you know, staying safe, staying inside, keeping pets safe, making sure your preparations are done. And just the overall flooding threat, uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much. I, I think that's um, – don't lose any sleep over the tornado threat because I think you'll be just fine with that. Um, Miss Peggy, thank you. For yeah, you're absolutely welcome. I'm glad I'm able to share it with everyone. To anyone who, who may just be joining, I'm going to stream for about 25, 30 more minutes, just kind of having a conversation on Florence. 
uh, conversational style. I think that's the most effective way to communicate. Uh, I have a, a screen crawl at the bottom here going over some impacts for some uh, specific cities and locations. And I'll, I will add, specifically for Shannon, for you, I will add the Unifor area of um, Hickory, Lenore, Morganton, and I can't remember the other, but uh, at, at this time, but I'll add that tomorrow just, just for that, because I did not know that region was called that. But just having a conversation about Florence, and I'm going to go through some more resources in a second. I'm going to talk about storm surge. Um, I don't think I have many coastal viewers on this page, so if you're watching, uh, feel free to ask questions about that. I'm going to go into the storm surge threat, which is is what I'm really beginning to become concerned about for our barrier islands. Um, thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're able to tune in. I plan on doing one of these every night. I can as long as I have power. I'm probably planning to lose power uh, midday or, or late evening Thursday is probably when most of the power outages are going to start. I don't have uh, WRAL, if, if you are in the central North Carolina area, has a, a neat uh, graphic that they go through on their on their weather hits uh, during the news that shows power outage potential. Um, I don't have a tool like that. I might be able to, to scratch one up by tomorrow, but I don't have anything like that. But power outages are going to be widespread. I mean, our area's infrastructure is not equipped to have you know wind and rain for this long. It's just that's a um, that's that's a fact of the matter. We're not equipped to handle this, and power is probably going to go out. And the biggest problem with that is that it's probably going to be due to trees falling on power lines and trees going, you know, over roads, trees falling on the roads for the power crews. The linemen can't get up and fix the power, number one, because it's going to be too windy, number two, because a tree's probably blocking their way. So it's just going to be, you know, you see the memes and stuff during wintertime, you know, North Carolina is going to be closed for a few days. It's just going to be, you have to have your supplies, you have to prepare all the chaos and getting the gas and food and stuff is important because, it's, you know, there are going to be some roads that are impassable. And one of my professors today in my class said this, and it's a very chilling statement, but it's true. Our state's going to be changed this time next week. There are probably going to be dozens of people who are alive today who will not be alive next week. There will be houses that are standing today that won't be standing this time next week. And that's particularly focused on the coast because it's a coastal storm, but it's the reality of the situation. We have over 10 million people in North Carolina and at least 3 million that are under this risk. Of, of having, you know, an extraordinary event hit them. And if you're not prepared for that, then, you know, that's, you're at, you're, you're putting yourself a higher risk for, for those damages. So as long as you're prepared, there's no need to worry. You're going to be fine. We'll get through it together. It'll be, a, a, we'll talk, we'll be talking about it and laughing about it, how, you know, the, the, the wind was rumbling our house, but just make sure you're prepared and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, so hi Dakota, hope you're doing well with the storm drift north towards Norfolk again. I highly doubt that and, and the main thing, so I guess I am going to have to give in and show a model run here because I want to show what the models were doing. And I urge extreme caution with this. Do not read anything into this. This is one model run out of several hundred that we've seen over the past several days. Um, but here's Dakota why I don't think it's going to drift north into into uh, Norfolk area and the Hampton Roads area. So. Uh, this is 12Z on Thursday. So 12Z corresponds to about 7 a.m. Eastern time, Eastern daylight time. So here's Florence approaching. Um, here it is at about 1 p.m. And then it comes here and it just sits and lingers and goes down here. Why it's doing that is I'm going to pull up some 500 millibar. Oh, don't tell me it's not on here. Um, 500 millibar. I guess this will have to, well, that's not going to help me either. Let's see here. I'm having a uh, having some technical difficulties. If I can pull up the right chart here. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go old school, old school, and I'm just drawing the map here. So uh, if I zoom out here, so Dakota, I don't think it's going to come up that way because what the models are depicting is there's a huge uh, ridge of high pressure that's going to be over this area. So it's modeling a big area of high pressure that's kind of sitting like this, and it's kind of acting to, to capture Florence, and Florence kind of gets caught up in this nook here. So here is our here is our cyclone down here. If you ever want to know how to draw a tropical cyclone, just draw a six and a nine on top of each other. It's a really quick way to draw a cyclone symbol. So if, you know, the storm's kind of going to get caught up in here, and the ridge is just going to be too strong it's going to continue, you know, over time, it's going to, you know, build down here and it's going to continue expanding sort of like this. 
and it's going to create kind of a wall for Florence, so it can't go anywhere. And that's why the the model forecast, if I flash back here real quick, has it going down in this direction. It can't it can't penetrate that high pressure. It can't go any farther north. So it's just going to kind of linger, and the storm's going to go, you know, here it's going to kind of drift down and go westward, which is a huge problem for for flooding, which is something I'm concerned about now. The more this trend is definitely not good for for rainfall potential. So. Um, that is that's certainly something that's going down. The wind threat is going down for a lot of areas up here because it's just kind of sitting, but the rainfall potential is going up the longer the storm stays inland. So uh, I don't think it's gonna we're gonna see a trend northward again. I think the upper limit that the storm's going to make a landfall is probably about Moorhead City. I don't see it getting above that that range over here. The impacts are gonna be felt all over the place. Like I said, it's a 500 mile wide storm. It's a very large storm. You're gonna feel impacts all over the state, but I um, I don't expect it to go any farther north than that. If you're just joining me, I'm going to be streaming for about 20 more minutes, just having a conversation on on Florence with um, with you all. I think that's the best way to communicate the information. Uh, I have a bunch of resources here pulled up, and I'm, I'm uh, I have a screen crawl at the bottom here that's giving some information on some locations. So look for your your specific area down there for some uh, generalized impacts. You know, prepare for for high impact weather regardless. Don't focus too much on the numbers. Just know that. An extraordinary event is coming our way. Uh, it's, it's not a once in a lifetime event because you know we, we just had Hurricane Harvey last year in, in Houston, Texas. But you know it's, it's something you got to prepare for. It's something abnormal. It's adverse weather. Prepare for significant weather between Thursday and Sunday because that's what's coming our way. Um, hi, Carrie. Hi, Kathy. Hope you're both doing well. Uh, so I think that's the last question. Thanks for sharing, Tina. I appreciate that. Feel free to share this uh, broadcast. I, I'm going to post it on YouTube afterward. Um, to for just for anyone who can't see. Um, so I guess if there's no questions right now, I'm going to stream for about 20 more minutes, but I'm going to go through and just talk about what we have on our hands. So these are current evacuation orders for North Carolina. Um, it's a great county map. I will share these uh, links afterward, but it's just NP, uh, NP North Carolina Department of Public Services gov slash Florence. Uh, Laura Louder, thank you. Your live stream has been, I thank you very much for that. I'm glad I'm able to have some helpful information your way. Um, thank you very much for your kind words. I plan on doing this every night as long as I have power and electricity available. So uh, hopefully you'll tune in tomorrow night as well. Uh, so current evacuation orders, we have all the counties in red are mandatory evacuations. Yes, mandatory, voluntary, and special conditions. So red is mandatory evacuation. So for uh, Dare County, for Terrell County, Hyde County, Pamlico County, Craven County, and Pinder County are all under mandatory evacuations. For Brunswick County, New Hanover County, which is the uh, home of Wilmington, Onslow County with Camp Lejeune, Carteret County with Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, and then up here in Currituck County are actually all under uh, voluntary evacuations as well, which just means if you're in a flood-prone area or an area that's you know low-lying, you're encouraged to evacuate to get to, um, to a safer location. And trust me, I, I can feel the impacts from those, uh, all, all of you coast coastal residents who are moving inland, we could tell today in Raleigh because the roads were cluttered and it was crowded. We could we could feel your presence here. So uh, we're, we're glad you you moved up this way to, to be in some safer area. And it's um, definitely being noticed. And uh, the green is just some conditional things. I'm not going to review those because, um, you know, each one has specific things. And if you're in that county, you should have gotten, you know, plentiful emails and phone calls. And you should know by now, you know, your evacuation orders if you're in that area. Uh, Tim, could you add Greenville to your scroll at the bottom for, to those who are watching? Absolutely. I will do that for tomorrow. I can't do that right now on the live stream, but I'll, I'll go through some individual impacts as I'm wrapping up. Um, yes, I will add Greenville. I, that is, that's a good point. I left out this kind of region here with uh, with Rocky Mount Wilson and, and uh, Greenville. So I will add that. Thank you for that. I appreciate you you calling me out on that for, for leaving Greenville out. Uh, so I, I guess I'll go over that real quick before I go into my next thing. So in terms of, in terms of impacts, if I zoom in here to North Carolina, I'm going to kind of do this once, and then I'm going to kind of back off of the, the independent questions and get into more of the storm surge thing because I think that's going to be a big deal. So for the Wilmington area, I think that is going to be the city and the area in our state that gets hit the worst with this storm. I think that uh, you can expect, you know, sustained winds from, you know, just just south of Hurricane Forge, you know, 50 to 70 miles per hour with gusts up to 90, possibly 100 possible. Um, I think that this area, I think this this whole region in here is going to probably be the worst hit in the state in terms of the storm surge, the rain, and the wind. Uh, I'm going to clear that out. So I've, I've discussed Wilmington. 
Uh, for Jacksonville, I kind of lump New Bern, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville together in this area. I think it's going to be the second worst hit. I, I hate to kind of rank it like that, but in terms of impact, I think that this area will have the worst um, in terms of the barrier islands too with the storm surge. But I think this area is also going to get a ton of rain, lots of wind impacts, and um, lots of, you know, it's just not going to be a good situation for anywhere down here. For the uh, Greenville, Rocky Mount, Wilson area, I would expect, you know, winds, you know, 30 to 50 miles per hour with some gusts up to hurricane force possible. The, the wind feel is really going to be the big question depending on how big the storm is. So I would almost kind of lump that in with, with the triangle area here with, you know, I would expect, you know, 30 to 50 miles. I feel like a teacher here, right? Writing this out on the screen, um, you know, wind somewhere in that ballpark with locally higher gusts, six to 10 inches of rain, totally possible. Not out of the question. The rainfall and the wind are the huge, huge question marks here. Just prepare for windy and rainy weather. There's not much more I can say to that until we see the storm coming on land and can really, you know, nail down what's going on. For Fayetteville, I think you'll see some more severe wind with that, but I think the rainfall potential will be on par with the Raleigh-Durham area. I think, you know, winds, you know, 40 to, to 50 miles per hour with some locally higher gusts is not out of the question at all. Um, I'm going to clear this out so that I don't um, let any confusion if anyone is just joining or I'm looking at that. So, you know, triad, I have a lot of viewers in the triad because that's where I was. I live for, for eight years and I moved back to this area. But uh, for the triad, I would expect winds, you know, 20 to 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 50, totally possible. Not out of the question. I would expect tree damage to be the biggest problem up there. I think most of the flooding is going to be confined to, you know, this area. I think the flooding is going to be, you know, well, I, I should kind of outline this and I'll change the map in a second, but that area is going to be the biggest impact with, with the flood. I think the biggest impact in the triad is going to be wind. Um, for Charlotte, big question mark remains of that westward kind of track for the storm. Is, is it going to be windy? You know, how windy is it going to be? How rainy is it going to be? It's going to depend on the exact track of the, of the storm. And ironically, it looks like the storm is, I think it's trying to get to the town of Florence. I really do. I, I think that's just something um, it, it seems like the track is getting closer and closer to directly going over Florence. So I, as ironic as that is, you can kind of think of that as where the storm is, is currently projected to go. It's kind of going to come up here and then just kind of sit and then drift westward into the, the Midlands of South Carolina. So uh, that, that's going to be the big question mark in terms of that. So I'm going to leave that there on the on terms of the you know city by city kind of outlook. I'll post more of that written on Facebook, but I'm going to focus more on some storm surge now the last little chunk of this video um, as I kind of wrap up here. I'll be streaming for about 10 to 15 more minutes and then I'm going to call it a night. Um, I'll stream every night as long as I have electricity and if you have any questions feel free to share them anytime in between these videos or during. I'll be happy to answer them and if I can answer them I'll point you to someone who, who uh, can. So to anyone who may just be jumping in I'll be streaming for about 15 more minutes. I'll be wrapping it up. If you have a if you have any questions just send them on the chat. Uh, I'm glad about glad about, excuse me. I'm glad I was able to help you. Um, sometimes it's hard to get specific information like that, but luckily, I'm not in a contract. I'm not you know on TV where I have a limited amount of time to say stuff, so I can devote a little more time to individual um, questions. So that's what I try to kind of pride myself on because I know that that is, you know, that's important to know what exactly is going to happen in in your area. Uh, Kathy, any impact in the Savannah area? I assume you're assuming we're talking about Savannah, Georgia. And I think that that area is included in the cone now. I think that those impacts would would mainly be number one, the storm surge uh, coming on. Probably you know one to, to three foot swells are possible as the storm's approaching. But I think any impacts from that would come from the rain after the fact over the weekend, so it wouldn't have any direct wind impact wind impacts. But I think that the rain could potentially become a story down in that area if this track does verify. Um, you know the storm's just kind of sitting once again to reiterate. This from here, this point to that point is 24 hours. So what is that? About 70 miles, maybe. Um, it goes 70 miles in 24 hours. That's not very fast. And uh, that's, you know, it's it's going to be crawling at that point, and it's just going to dump a lot of rain. So uh, specific impacts for Savannah, Georgia are not super clear, but it is in the cone of uncertainty now just because it looks like it's going to, to kind of linger in this area and could have some, some rainfall impacts for sure in that area. So I want to jump into storm surge because I think that's a part that's really, if you're not on the coast, you're not focused on it, but that's where a lot of the damage comes from. And that's where a lot of people, it can take them by surprise. And I'm particularly worried about the the barrier island. So I'm on the coastal emergency risk assessments page, Sarah. It is, um, 
you can see all the sponsors down here from UNC Chapel Hill, LSU, um, you know, C Grant, all kinds of corporations that devote their time and energy into this model to make sure that it's um, an accurate representation of of what we can expect. And of course, the storm surge is going to be on the uh, the worst on the right side of the storm. And since the track has shifted, I wonder if I actually refresh this page if that was updated. And it looks like it has not updated yet. So this information may not be exactly up to date, but I'm still going to do it to show the idea. So the main concern here with the storm surge, I'm actually going to outline in white because I think it's going to be easiest color to see. The main thing, we have a unique situation here in North Carolina where we have the Pamlico sound and the Albemarle sound up here. We have the sound, we have a sound side and an ocean side. So if water does come over the barrier islands, that's that's fine but then you also have the fetch is you know referred to as a fetch you have a lot of water left on the pamlico sound to still push up so you see these high colors here these warm colors indicate uh, maximum water heights of you know 10 you know 10 feet 10 to 12 feet of storm surge is not out of the question for these areas and that pushes it all the way up the noose and the trent river which would be catastrophic flooding for some of these areas so we hope the situation does not pan out but uh we live in a, a very peculiar situation in these, these parts of North Carolina where water can actually be pushed up the river. That's a very thick arrow. If we, uh, it, it can be pushed upstream, that's not gonna show up well. I need to, to do the black color here. So water can be pushed upstream and then you have all the rain that falls over here and the water has to go somewhere. So it trickles down the Tar River and it you know, comes and, and floods in Greenville. Or similarly, it pushes it up here through Camp Lejeune and Jacksonville and Onslow County. You have a bunch of rain in here. It goes down the Noose River and the, you know, the, the Black River and the, you know, other rivers down here in this watershed, the White Oak River and the, the Cape Fear River. And you have this bunching up of water, which is why you have flooding so bad. You have water coming in from both directions, and it has to go somewhere, so it goes out of the banks and into homes and into areas. That's why you have such bad flooding in that corridor. But the storm surge, you know, I'm particularly worried about. Um, our barrier islands down here because unlike with Hurricane Harvey, a lot of those barrier islands in Texas are nature preserves or not inhabited, but we have very popular beaches down here like Topsail Beach, Surf City, uh, you know, Camp Lejeune is right there, Emerald Isle, Atlantic Beach, Crystal Coast, Cape Lookout, Figure Eight Island um, is down here somewhere. I can't quite place it on here. Ocracoke Island um, over here for reference. So, you know, th this is yet to be seen what exactly is is going to happen over here you know this this projection has these entire communities uh under water which is concerning um i don't know exactly what kind of you know is being output by this model what exactly it's, it's showing here besides you know maximum water height but this could be catastrophic storm surge if this if this pans out and storm surge is one of the the worst parts about a hurricane because there's no other it's basically like a tsunami except it's tsunami that keeps hitting and if that storm sits off the coast as it's supposed to or forecast to do, these places are going to keep getting inundated with you know, seawater, and seawater is corrosive. There's salt in it, so it damages everything it touches. You have fresh water flooding, which you know is bad enough, but then you add the sea salt into that mixture, and you have even worse damage that you know uh, it's exacerbated over time because you have salt water that gets into everything. So seawater is really nasty and is hard to, to clean up, and it's just it's going to be bad and it's going to be bad somewhere where exactly that somewhere is is still a little bit unclear but if you live on the coast you should really consider not being there uh from thursday through sunday um hi Zania, hope you're doing well i'm going to stream for about 10 more minutes here and then wrap it up uh, i'm going to stream every night that i have electricity available so i'll plan to do one tomorrow night and hopefully on the day thursday as well as we watch florence come in so I think I will just go back to here. I do want to, to uh, look at a couple. This is a great page from the National Weather Service in Raleigh, which is uh, the office that controls most of the counties you're probably watching from. It includes the triad, uh, Forsyth County, Guilford County, and uh, Davidson County. And they have a great page they put together with, they have a bunch of, Tina, I'll get to that question in just a second. So Outlook, Active Storms, um, Threats, Local Products, Satellite, Radar, Social Media, and other links. It's a great page. It has a lot of information on it. Uh, one of the, the best uh, things on here is a threat and impact. So this is a good place you can go to answer your question. And I wonder if they've updated their track here. So I'm going to refresh and see if that does 
So it looks like they have possibly updated the track. I can't quite tell. But you know, this is a good graphic. You can toggle between different threats here and see the risk level. So here's our legend down here um, you know, with, with the magnitude of each event. And you can download images and share them. So I'll be do, doing a little bit of that to, to help spread that information out. But you know, the risk is very high for wind down here, obviously, because it's a, it's a very a strong storm coming in. Storm surge threat is exceptional down here on the Bear Islands and up in this area, which is, you know, that could end up being a big story down here is how the, the sound water actually gets up into these nooks and crannies where the, the Noose and Trent River join and up here in the Tar River and the uh, the Roanoke River up here, a little little more um, immune. I, guess, I think that's the Roanoke River. I'm, I might be a little turned around up here, but, um, you know, the flooding rain threat, it's it's large everywhere. It's going to, it's a hurricane, guys. It's just going to be windy and rainy. There, there's no way around that. The magnitude of it is yet to be seen, but it's going to be a high impact event. And, you know, you should have been preparing for it for the past couple of days. We have about 24 hours of safe preparation time left. And then after that, conditions will start to deteriorate. As far as the tornado threat, to get back at some of the questions asked earlier, pretty low at this point, but not zero. So that's why they kind of include that on here because it's not a zero threat, um, but it's not, you know, it'll be confined to east of Interstate 95. So this is a great page. Um, they have all the information you could you could ask for in this, this area here. They even have a radar link for, for information like that. So that's a great place to go as well. So I'm going to leave it on this slide while I answer this question. Uh, Tina, what is your opinion of the, the Vinci Sky model? Is that the thing with the streamlines that kind of goes around and um, shows like the wind? Let's see, Vinci Sky. Yeah, so I'm not too familiar with this. I know I see this visualization all over the place. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of model data they're feeding in to this. Um, so I'm not going to, to go into that because I haven't really looked at it too much. So I'm, I'm not going to look at it right now. But I would assume that they get all of their data from either the, the global forecast system, GFS, or the European model. Um, I think that is, you know, it's as accurate of a representation as anything. I think it's a good way to visualize the data, but I don't know how much, you know, impact base you could you could really get off of it. But it's an interesting source. I'll look more into that before tomorrow's live stream, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that question. So in terms of that, I want to stream for just a few more minutes, and I want to end up uh, just with a kind of overview of what's going on. So I'm going to refresh this loop uh, just to show you, you know, the storm is approaching. This is a, a great site to see this. You can do a custom zoom on this, this weather nerd site that, that seems to be put together by a bunch of weather nerds, such as I. Um, people, people like me who just want to have good visualization, good data online to view. So here is Hurricane Florence. Here we are. It's about 750 miles from Cape Fear down here. Uh, up here in Central North Carolina, about you know 900 miles away, and it it's coming. It's it's on its path. Um, so it is continuing as expected. It'll continue on this west northwest bearing before turning up. And what happens after it crosses? Whoops! I moved my screen over here. What happens after it crosses that line is what is yet to be seen in this area. You know, up until about here, we're confident. We know it's going to come this way. But once it crosses that threshold. Does it continue going up here and curve? Does it, you know, take a sharper curve and go inland? Um, I think this area is, I'm not going to say in the clear, but I think that the impact, uh, the chance of a direct landfall up here is just waning very quickly. It's getting very low. Um, but I think that the main area to focus on is going to be in this area right in here where, where the biggest uh, threat of a landfall is. So I'm going to kind of wrap that up here. I don't see any more questions coming in, and our numbers have kind of uh, waned down. So we've been streaming for about 45 minutes. Time flies when you're when you're talking about uh, stuff you love. It's, it's my passion here, so I hope that that is conveyed as well and then some of that. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed. If you have any more questions, you can uh, message me on Facebook. I'll try to include them into tomorrow's. I included this screen crawl tonight to kind of address some of those questions. I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm adding the Unifor community and also Greenville area on there per request and I will have that for tomorrow night's stream and I'll be sharing these resources you know that I use the social media to communicate the information so if it's available I'm going to I'm going to communicate it so um, I hope this I hope this screen isn't freezing up the live stream it looks like it might be so I'm going to, to end on this graphic which is the, the official hurricane track and that's what we're currently looking at it's going to be high impact weather have all your preparations done by tomorrow night and expect you know significant weather between Thursday and Sunday. It's going to be windy, it's going to be rainy, but we'll get through it and we'll come out better on the other side.
So I'm going to sign off here for the night, uh, get some rest. It's important to get some rest. These events are physically and mentally exhausting to wait for them. It takes a long time to get here. I saw a joke on Facebook talking about how it was waiting for a hurricane was like waiting, <laughs> being stalked by a turtle. You know, it's it just kind of looms over for a long time and you get all these ideas and images in your head. Um, it's just important to get some rest, get some rest because you'll need it and uh, make sure that, that you rest up and have plenty of sleep as we go into the, uh, the zero hour for impact starting on Thursday. So I'm going to sign off here. Thanks all. Thanks all for watching. And I will be back tomorrow afternoon from uh, for some more information. Absolutely. Laura, hope you enjoyed from Albemarle. Hope you uh, have your preparations ready and are ready for some wind and rain this week. And we will get done with the storm soon enough. It'll eventually get out of here. We'll, we'll wait for that day, but until now I will uh, see you later. Stay safe and, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks.